One thing that's immensely useful and very important for us is the notion of subgroup. So, it's a subset of elements of the group. It has to always have identity in it, otherwise it's not a group thing without identity. And yeah, some number of subsets. This is order, H is the order of the subgroup. And this has a property that's either a subgroup or the same as the group itself. And uh, it's closed under group multiplication. So here is an example. Consists of identity and just the symmetry flip. And if you want to be pedantic, it's symmetry flipping of one to two. This is obviously a subgroup because you know, I interchange this to this. I do it twice, I'm back. So it has a property that sigma one two square is identity. So it's a group of two elements. First of all, there's always a trivial group. Identity applied to identity to identity is identity. And of course, the group itself is a subgroup. So that's always true, the identity and the subgroup. I have here an example of group of order two, and then I have an example of group of order three, which is I go one third around, or if I do it twice, that's a group with three elements, because I have that C cube of this generator of the group one third is identity. If I rotate three times, I'm back. This is cyclic group with order three. Once I understand this is a group, then also there's a subgroup called E sigma two three. Did I hear somebody yawn? I mean, I stayed up until four. How long did you stay up? Four thirty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I defer to sleep deprived graduate students. So there are actually three subgroups of order two. And you know, morally, they look the same. I mean, tuck, 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 tuck. so you know, we should invent an, another word to say this. And then there's also a flipped version of this, because if I look at sigma C12, rotation third in the other direction, flipping means I go the other way. And if I look at this thing squared, okay, so there's six subgroups, so that's kind of suggestive order of the group is six and that's six subgroup. But we realize we have to do something more interesting because these things are the same morally. It's just that you know, I've changed the coordinates. The next notion that we find very useful from this huge compendium of discrete theory and actually, I was saying not nice things, but it's really beautiful. Uh, theory of discrete groups is beautiful for everybody. <coughs> it's the notion of class. Formal definition is that if B is in G, then a conjugate is conjugate to group element A if there exists element C such that I can write B as go, you know, go from here to there. That is group element C minus one, just for convenience. Then I do my symmetry operation, flip this way and I go back. So uh, we find that this and this and this belong to a class 
because there is an operation in which I can go to there, I can perform my thing, and I can come back. So now we have a notion saying that these three guys belong to a class. So we have um, six classes, do nothing, that's class by itself always, do everything, or do a simple subgroup with two elements, you have three guys and you can permute them. Next notion now orbits. But now that we have a symmetry, we also have to do a group orbit. So group orbit is the set um, labeled again by a starting point like x0 in this thing or this point. Which is a set of points gx obtained by all group elements. Here is a simple example. This group orbit has only two points because it has a, belongs to a symmetry in which I have only two elements. So it's a simple group orbit. Orbit like this has three points. So these are examples of group orbits for finite groups. The definition is also good for continuous groups. The group orbit can be very simple. This only has two examples related by the symmetry. Uh, the group orbit is the set of all images of a point on the group action. Every element of the six elements of the group orbit maps this into one of these three points. E keeps it where it is, sigma f uh, moves it, and rotation actually also moves it. So the group orbit is just three points. Even though I apply six transformations, I'm only moving around three points. If I apply just a parity operation, it maps into itself. But under rotation, it maps into these orbits. So this orbit has three images and the six applications of the group operations. It doesn't have six images, it has only three. But if I take some generic orbit that does something here, you know, bounces for a while, you'll have six images. Generic orbit. So if you take a turbulent snapshot and you flip it, it's a different snapshot. You flip it this way, it's a different snapshot. You advance it by one half, it's a different snapshot. But if, the, if you look at periodic orbit with a symmetry, then you flip it and it looks like itself. So generic orbit has no symmetry, uh, but compact orbits might have very interesting symmetry.